Hi guys, let's go on with our, our new toy that we designed, a crafts, and we're going to talk a couple of sessions about them, quite a lot, and I'm going to take my time uh, to explain everything. It's a very interesting topic and it's very useful and we'll see some some not not obvious results at all, things that are not, have some some applications in, in real life science in, in and they're already kind of deep results okay but we have to of course build up to that and um, so let me remind you very quickly what a graph is so a graph or a network has is a two collections is the, the collection of vertices so these are the vertices vertices that's the word that's the plural of vertex right and e are the edges and so the edges are pairs uh, consisting of two vertices the so-called endpoints and for most when i'm talking about the graph i'm kind of always thinking about a simple graph so that means no loops no directions no double edges sometimes i will talk about special some of the many of these definitions work for or many of these concepts work for the more general case so i will once in a while mention them but we, our main focus will always be on these uh, simple graphs and later on on directed graphs. Directed graphs also are important. Okay, so an example. Let's do an example here that we have a little bit to talk about. Uh, so I'm first of all the representation of a graph is a different thing than the graph. So this is a, what I call a representation. That is a, a bunch of dots which represent the nodes that represent the vertices. So vertices or nodes and um, they normally have names more often than not and so i'm going to call them a b c d e f g and h now there is i want to stress this several i will say this several times there is absolutely no restriction on where you put these dots and how you in which order there is no order there is no position there is no requirements they are just a bunch of dots randomly put in there but as we take make graphs the problem of graphs is that we have to put in edges now so we an edge between a and d for instance and we have an edge between d and f we also have an edge between d and h and you see already i have to make some curvature here otherwise i'm if i would just draw a straight line from d to h it will go through f and it's not clear so i could do this but this is different right so in this graph we have an edge from from d to f we have an f from f to h and we have an edge from d to h that is they are this is not this is not the same as that okay and for instance you see here this is one edge is another edge but there's that doesn't mean that there is an edge here it really is um in the the choice of these edges could there is no restriction in general on a graph which edges are there and which are not okay but uh, when we say simple graph, as I said, we cannot draw two edges there, or we cannot draw loops. That's the only restrictions. Okay, let's go on. Uh, I'll, I'll draw a little bit more. I'm going to D to B. And then, so now, already here you see a little bit of a problem. I want to go from A to E, but I, there's, I can go around. I could do this. Okay, so let's do this now. But you'll see at some point I'm going to run, even then I'm going to run into problems. So I want to also go from A to C. Oh, so from A to C, if I go from A to C, that would be this here, and say from C to G, and also from F to G, say, and uh, let me put also I in here, and I is going to be sad because there's nothing coming and going. Okay, so let's look at this graph. I was able to do it without having to cross any... Um, edges but as i said the more edges you ha have the, the harder it becomes and there's actually a theorem about it that unfortunately we're not gonna uh, discuss but um i can invite you to look at it it's about called planar graphs so a graph that can be realized in the in the plane without crossing edges that's called a planar graph and so this is an example because there's no crossings but not every graph is and we will shortly see examples of that so okay now a very important concept so what okay some terminology that i'm going to use always the time uh, all the time is we say if we have two edges 
uh, two, sorry, two vertices that are connected by an edge, then we call them adjacent. So <clears throat> let me call the word adjacent. So the word adjacent is applied to vertices and means connected by an edge. And that word adjacent is used quite a lot, and we will see it um, in later also pop up again. So this is what adjacent means. It just means there's an edge between them. It's just uh, because graphs are so ubiquitous, means they are, occur a lot in, 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 in computer science, in, in other chemistry, in pure math. Um, objects that are so often used, we have we have more than usual terminology for. If an object is used very little, we, we're not going to bother giving mon many names to it. But if it's something very popular, if it's used a lot, then there are quite a lot of, of terminology that is in use here. Uh, so be aware that I'm going to dump some definitions, some terminology on you, and eventually you will pick up on that. And and, and often they are not so adjacent. Okay, it tells you kind of they're next to each other, right? That's what it literally means. Okay, so, so okay. Now, the first thing I want to define is the degree of a vertex. The degree of a vertex, and that is exactly the number of edges... Oh, sorry, I, you know, I always use this pound sign for number, but I know that the book does the other one, so okay. The number of edges... Uh... <coughs> okay, yeah, sorry, I, I should perhaps say this. Adjacent, it makes it easier if I say this. Adjacent means, when I say two, edge, uh, two vertices adjacent, I mean they're connected by an edge. But we also say that a, an edge and a point and a vertex, sorry, are adjacent, means that the edge, that the point, the endpoint, that the vertex is one of the endpoints of the edge. So adjacent can apply to two nodes, and that means there is a vertex between them. So, okay, adjacent, adjacent vertices, that means connected by an edge. Uh, vertex and edge, are adjacent. So if we have this situation, what does that mean? This means that uh, the vertex is an endpoint, an endpoint of the edge. Now you say, okay, this is wh why would you have a different name for this? But you'll see. So, like now, for instance, I can say here the degree of a vertex is the number of edges that are adjacent with this uh, vertex. So of, with the vertex, the degree of a vertex A, degree A, okay, is the number of edges, uh, edges adjacent to little a. <clears throat> that's the definition of a degree. So that's the definition of degree here. So that's degree. So let's let's look. Uh, okay, sorry, a a is a particular one. So I should use perhaps a variable here. So let's let's put here x. The book uses a uh, Greek letter, but I don't know really why they do that, so I'm just going to use an X. So the degree of a vertex X is the number of edges that are adjacent to X, X which means the number of edges that have X as an endpoint. Okay. So let's calculate this in this case here. So this is called sometimes a degree uh, table. So here we have the vertices, the vertices, the vertices. So here are the vertices. Oh, oh, let me just say V. V is a set of vertices, right? So I'm going to make it easier and just call this V. In this case, we have quite a lot. We have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. Okay, and how do you count this now? So the degree, we just count the number of edges. And you can do this actually visually. So let me show you. Let's calculate the degree of A. Well, just See how many of these arrows come in. Well, it's not an arrow, sorry. How many of edges come in or go out? It, it, since it's un undirected, there is no direct... It, it's undirected graph, so there are no actual directions. So how many edges are adjacent? That's why we say. And we see three, so that's three. For B, oh, that's only one, okay. For C, one, two, right? For D, let's see, one, two, three, four, okay. For E... Also one for F, one, two, three. You have to count whatever it is, right? For G, where is G? Okay, one, two. So two of them. H, also one, two. 
And then for i, what do you think it's there? Well, nothing, so zero. Okay, so that's the degree of um, a graph. Now, let me see what happens if we have um, a graph, not a simple graph. So I'm going to do an example in which I'm going to use some other colors to make some extra, uh, extra guys going here. So suppose we have two arrows here. We also have uh, another uh, three arrows there here. And let's do another loop here. So let's see how that changes the degrees. Okay. So let's see how do you count the degrees in A. How would you count that? Let's let's do the same trick that we did before, but now in in orange, right? So one, two, three, four, five. And now what we do here? Six, seven. So the degree is seven. So this is for the orange, black and orange. Okay. I hope you see the difference. Okay. Notice what happened here. Let's let's look. A multi. If I if, if I have two edges going from A to B, well, okay, there are two edges. So that that doesn't. It's not such a deep thing to think. Okay, that contributes to two, right? So we have one contribution for the simple one, for one for the simple one. Here we have a multi edge, as we call it. it it's there twice, so we count it twice. We have it once here. So it's the loop a little bit. Notice that we loop, counted the loop twice, and that somehow makes sense, right? Because the loop has an endpoint A, but there also has the the other endpoint is A, so we should somehow think of it twice. This edge is the, the degree. The degree is the way it connects to the rest. Okay, and A connects. Yeah, it's uh, why we do this is is because of what I'm going to show you next. Is but let let's um, work out the rest here. So for B now it has become oops three right one two three uh, for C what has changed is also one two three. Uh, D hasn't not changed, so that is just 4, E, I didn't do anything on E, no, F, ah, I, F, I put another loop, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because the loop that counts for 2. In G, uh, oh yeah, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4 now. Uh, in H, that hasn't changed, so that's 2, and also I is still the same. So that's the degrees of a multigraph. Now, again, I'm not going to deal with much multigraphs, so I'm going to um, get rid of them. I'm going to try to get rid of them and, and keep my original picture. I don't know whether this is going to work. If it doesn't work, then I have to draw it again. It seems to be working, right? Okay, we have a little bit of orange dots here, but that hopefully doesn't distract too much. So I'm going to also erase this now because it's no longer there. I gave it as an example of how you calculate degrees in, in more complicated graphs. And the main thing to uh, remember is loops count twice. Okay, but going back to the regular case. Um, okay, let's, for the heck of it, add this up. Let's take the sum here. So we take the sum of these degrees. 4, 6, 10, 14, 16, 18. Okay, 18. Um, how many uh, vertices we had? Okay, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, so that were 9 vertices. So let's, let's record what we have. We have the number of vertices is 9 and the sum of all the degrees. So how would we do that? Well, we sum over all the degrees of all the vertices and that was 18. Okay, I'm going to do another graph. And let's, uh, let's do the following graph. Um, I'm going to make it a shorter graph. So we have, let's make a couple of people here. Alice. And then we have Bob. And we have Carla. And let's get David in the game. And perhaps also Eve. Remember Alice and Bob and Eve from uh, This Kid Mad 1? Okay, so... Alice and Bob, they know each other well, so they're going to shake hands. So whenever they, so they, they all come, they're all in the room and they, they, they greet each other or not. If they don't, don't know each other, they don't greet. So it's handshaking. So Alice and Bob, they shake their hands. Okay. And what about Alice and David? Yeah, they know each other. And actually, Bob also knows David, so they all shake hands. Now, Carla also only knows Bob, so she's only shaking hands with Bob. And Eve, you know... 
Evil Eve. Oh, that's a, I'm, I'm, I'm hope nobody's name is Eve. Don't take it personally. It's just uh, in in this. It's the spy. If you if you want to think of it positively, it's a very clever spy that it, that figures out what Alice and Bob are up to. But nobody shakes hands with her. Okay. So let's go to degrees here. And I'm instead of, of, of instead of making a table, I'm just gonna mark them on the graph at each right. So what is the degree here? Two. What's the degree here? Three. What's the degree here? Two. One. And remember, this is zero. So the sum of the degrees. So the sum of the degrees where x goes on and all to the vertices is in this case 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, that is uh, 7, 8. Uh, 7, 8, yes, yes, okay. Okay, so now... Oh, sorry, yes, okay. <clears throat> oh, I, in my previous table, I forgot to, to make, I want to add something, and that's, I went too quickly to this example, sorry. Another thing I want to do is, let's count the number of edges. So we found the number of vertices was 9, what's the number of edges? Let's count those. It's a bit harder to keep track of them, so I'm, I'm going to use a pencil to get, scratch some kind of out that I don't double count. So, 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I had nine edges. Okay. Sorry, this is a, a, a kind of information that I have on um, this previous graph. Now look at this graph. So what is the number of vertices in this graph? Uh, that is five, right? We have these five gra these five uh, vertices. How many? Um, Edges do we have? So let's count the number of edges. Again, I'm going to do this like one, two, three, four, right? Yes, four. Okay, four. So how are these numbers related, do you think? Well, the, first of all, let's see. The number of vertices is something that we have very little control over because if, suppose here, uh, my sister-in-law just w walked in, so I call, put her here. And she's not connected, she doesn't shake hands with everybody. You know, COVID and so, you're, you're very careful. So again, I have added one, pers one person, so this would now be, instead of five, it would be six. So we have now six here. So th this is now with this new person added. So here we would have six, but the number of edges has not changed. So you see, we can change the number of vertices without numbered edges. But if I now suppose, okay, she, she knows Bob and she shakes her hands with Bob. So what has changed now? Now we have one extra edge. So if we have now one more handshake, we have now five. But now we also have uh, more, de the degrees have changed. The degree of Bob is now changed from three to four. And the degree for Shireen, of course, has just one. Because she's only shaking hands with one person. So what we see now that the sum of the degrees is one, five, 7, 9, 10. Okay, so what happens here? Notice that when I added an edge here, I added an edge, right? When I added a person or a node, nothing happened, neither degree nor the number of edges changed, if I don't, if I don't put any edges between them. But when I add an edge, even if I add an edge, let, let's do, do one more. I'm sorry that I'm keeping you a bit on suspense here, but I'm going to add one more and I'm going to do this in blue. Let's say that Shireen says, oh, oh, Alice, yes, yes, I didn't see you. I'm going to also shake your hands. So what changes now? Okay, now in blue, Alice has now three handshakes and Shireen has now two handshakes and nothing else changes. So what has changed? The number of edges has changed because of an added one edge. The number of vertices has not changed, but the degrees have changed. How many has it gone up? Well, one more handshake between Alice and Shireen meant that the degree of Alice goes up by one and the degree of Shireen goes up by one. So in total, it goes up by two. So each time I add an edge, 
the number, the degree, it goes up by two. Why? Because two persons are shaking their hands, so each person has now one more handshake. And so this, in this case, if, so we, I could call this the number of handshakes, right? How many hands are shook here? Okay, that's a little bit weird to say, say this. So the number of handshakes is the sum of the degrees. Okay, however, every ha every person has one hand and he has shaken the hands. So uh, Alice has shaken her hands one, two, three times. So one, two, three times. And Shireen has done it twice. And Bob is four and so on and so on. So if we add all this up, that's exactly the sum of the degrees. That's 12. And we notice that whenever I add an edge, what is adding an edge in this in this scenario is means an extra handshake. And an extra handshake means, well, that's... The, the, Person A is shaking her hand, so that's one extra hand there. And she, person B also shakes the hands, right? Because they're not using feet. We, we use hands when we shake hands, okay? So we get um, plus two. So every increase of one edge is a, a doubling of increases in this number of handshakes, so the number of the sum of the degrees. Good, right? And even more. Suppose uh, Eve feels a bit sorry for herself and she says, Okay, guys, I'm going to shake my hand. I'm going to shake my own hand. I, I don't know how to do that, really, but let's do it. She says, okay, I'm shaking my hand. So I'm introducing a loop, which means I'm not in the usual setup of graphs anymore. What has happened? Well, I added one more edge. A loop is an edge. How is the degree changed? Ah, we said a loop counts for two. We were smart, right? Because, after all, if she shakes hands, it's her left hand shakes with her right hand, right? I am doing it here, but you cannot see it. But I'm trying to to do the handshake with left my own left hand to my own right hand. So I'm using two hands. So yes, it goes up by two. An increase of one edge is a double increase in the sum of the degrees. So we have now actually a theorem. It says this, and it's called the handshake theorem. That's why I did this example with handshakes. The handshake theorem says this: the number of edges. But twice the number of edges is equal to the sum of the degrees of the vertices. So this is the formula that we have checked, right? This is here an edge. And we have seven edges, twice, the, twice that is 14, is exactly the sum of the degrees. And the reason is very simple. Each time you have an edge, it results in a degree increase of two Two different or two the same doesn't matter. Two vertices have now one higher degree, or the same vertex has twice the degree if it's a loop. And by the way, it also doesn't matter if it's. Uh, you can check here. It really, if you think about it, adding an edge in this scenario is handshaking. So for it's, um, Shireen uh, forgets that she has sh shaken hands with Bob, and so or they they like each other so much, so they shake hands again. So let's make it in another color here. So one more shake here. What is changing? Well, I add, added one edge, so there are now eight. Sorry if I keep stretching this out. But what has happened? Her number of handshakes has gone up, and so has his. They took twice the hand with the same person, but who cares? It's a shaking of hand. So we have 16, exactly doubling. So this is a so-called famous uh, handshaking theorem which is already cute, and it has one unexpected consequence. And here's the consequence. So, um, if we have a graph like this, and by the way, you notice everything is here always undirected, undirected graphs. So if you have a graph like that, um, then we have the following theorem. So theorem, it's in the book, it's called theorem 2. The number... I'm going to write it down. The number of vertices having odd degree, odd degree, is even. Okay, that's a bit weird sentence, right? So let's parse this a little bit. <coughs> let's perhaps, let's look at, at an example. Hopefully that makes everything clear. So let's look at how many Let's calculate these two numbers that are mentioned here in the the number of vertices having odd degree. Let's look at that number here in our example. How many vertices have odd degree? Let me get rid here. 
sorry, I'm gonna get rid of the purple guy if you don't mind here, this one loop. I wanna work and also with this one. So I wanna be in the situation where we had um um A, a simple graph. I want to stick to simple graphs. Although many things that I'm saying uh, is true also for these more general graphs, but let's let's stick to that. Okay. So this um, number that I put here in purple. So we want to calculate the number of vertices that have an odd degree. Okay. So how many? Which are the ones with odd degree? Let's circle them. This has odd degree. Not that one. Not not that one. Not that one. Ah, this has odd degree. So. The number of vertices of vertigree in this example was 2. Well, 2 is an even number. Well, that's coincidence, you say. Okay, I want to test this here. So, let's count. We had here how many degrees we have the table. 1 of odd degree, 2 of odd degree, 3 of, 4 of odd degree. I'll be damned. An even number again. So, perhaps it is true. Two samples as not a proof. Okay, you, you should draw many, many graphs before you even might be convinced that it's true, because two could be very just, I mean, even or odd, it's one or the other, it's 50-50% chance that I am uh, right, right? So, just with two examples is not enough, but the theorem is true, and now I want to explain why that is, okay? So, I'm going to see a proof, that I, I didn't give a real proof of the handshake theorem, although I kind of explained it, how it works, right? So, but I'm going to use the handshake theorem, so let's, let's say... Um, Let's write it down. The number, I'm, I'm, I'm writing down the, that's the handshake theorem, okay? Now I'm going to split the vertices in the ones that have odd degree and even degree. So V odd is the vertices of odd degree. And V even are the vertices of even degree. <coughs> okay, so this sum breaks down in these two sums, right? We uh, add up over all the ones in odd degree plus all the ones in even degree. Think of it, what, what, why is this true? Why is this sum, sum formula true? Well, these are disjoint sets, right? And then if we want to count uh, in a disjoint sets, then we have an OR. That's an OR. It's either this OR that, an, an exclusive OR, and so this is the sum rule that we can use without um, any exclusion exclusion principle because uh, we have uh, we have no intersection. There's no common ones. Okay. So okay, I hope this is clear. Now let's see. This is an even number. Okay, let me go in purple now. This is an even number because it's a multiple of two. What about this this number? Well, yeah, yeah, because x is an even uh, vertex of even degree, so it's even. So this is even, and a sum of even numbers is even. So this whole thing is even. Okay, but if this is even, and this is even, think a little bit about it, this must be even. Okay, so, okay, so, what the, one, the first conclusion is that this number is even. But that's not, are we there yet? Well, let's see. But that doesn't mean anything. Because it, uh, what I'm saying is the sum of a bunch of numbers is even. But what does that mean? Okay, 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3 is an even number. So what? Okay, it's, it's, it's that 50-50, right? But now let's think about this. Each of these numbers is what? Odd. Okay, so this is an odd number. Now let's, let's look at examples from odd numbers. If I take odd plus odd, what's the result? Even, right? What if I have an odd plus an odd plus an odd? What do I get then? Well, these two are even, and I'm adding an odd to that, so the result will be odd. And so on. So let's think. How do you, if you add, a, these are all, all odd numbers. If I add a bunch of odd numbers and the result is even, how many should I have added? Well, two, perhaps, or four, or six. But not 5, not 3. In other words, an even number. And that's exactly what I'm claiming. The number of vertices of odd degree. So how many of these guys are there? So this is what I'm saying, right? V odd, the number of vertices of odd degree is even. Because it's I'm taking in this sum 
there are this many terms and each term is an odd number and if you take an even number of odd numbers you get an even number if you have an odd number of odd numbers you get an odd number and there there you go okay Um, yes. So now I want to go to do the same thing, uh, but with directed graphs. So I'm going to work now for a little while with directed graphs. Okay, so let's put Alice and Bob and Carla, hey Carla, come on Carla, and David, again in the same room, and also Eve. Okay, and let's also put my sister-in-law in here, Shireen. Okay, so these are the six people, they are in the same room, and it is uh, Christmas, and it's like the kind of Santa, secret Santa thing or something like that. So, one person has bought a present for another person. So, this, to represent this um, event, the, 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 who has bought for whom, we cannot model this with undirected graphs, because it is some person gives to another. So, there's a direction here of giving, right? So, for instance, Alice has bought a present, and she has given it to Carla, okay? And Alice, of course, she's very good friends with Bob, so she gives a, uh, a present to Bob, you know about Eve, so they kind of ignore Eve, and Alice is kind of generous, she's about a present for David, and she even um, bought a present for Shireen. So she bought presents for everybody and gives presents to everybody. Bob says he knew that Alice was going to there, go there and bought a present there, but he kind of didn't think anybody else was there, so he only had bought a present for her. Now, Eve wants to get on good terms with Carla, so she said, okay, I'm going to buy a present for Carla. And David has an eye on her, on Carla, and so he buys a present for her. And Carla is, uh, well, the, the, Shireen and Carla are friends, and so they give each other presents. So let's do it this way. See, I'm trying to avoid crossing, and it gets even worse when I have to do arrows like that, right? So this is the gift-giving graph, let's call it that. It is directed graph. What we, at some point, what we will do is look at a directed graph and say, let's now uh, imagine there are no arrows anymore, and then we get an undirected graph. But of course, as a result, we could have, if, if I if ignore the two arrows here, there would be a double edge here between. So we would get a multi-graph in, in general. Sometimes one says, okay, if there is an arrow in either direction, I'm just going to put one single edge. So these two would basically collapse into a single un, 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 um, unordered, un, undirected uh, edge. But that's for later. I don't, don't want to say too much about that now. So we can still talk about, you can think of this as degrees. If you don't count the directions, you say, okay, that is here. Let's, let's look here. Um, okay, I'll do it here. For, so one... One, two, three, four, five. That would be the degree. That's the, the let's let's say this is how much presents have been. Yeah, it it in this kind of thing it's even hard to say what it represents, right? I'll leave it up to you. What does it mean that there are the degree is five here? Doesn't really mean that much, right? In this kind of setting. But what makes a lot of sense is how many presents has Alice given? So that's the arrows that go out, okay? So this is called the out degree. So the uh, out degree. So out degree. So let's here put the vertices here again. So we have Alice, Bob. Uh, yeah, sorry, let me make my table the other way around. Let me put first the vertices and then the degree, okay? So we have, uh, so here are the vertices, so that is Alice, Bob, Carla, David, 
and uh, Eve and Shirin. Okay. Okay. And now, um, so out degree. And the out degree means how many vertices have an outgoing, are an outgoing, in other words, of, of how many vertices L is the beginning point, the start point. So now we can count this. I'm going to do this, uh, let me do this in red. But I can only uh, cross, I can only mark, let me mark it like that, an arrow that has outgoing. So not the next one, because an incoming, but this is an outgoing arrow. This is an outgoing arrow, and this is an outgoing arrow. So I find four. But you you can guess now, you, of course, the other thing to look at is how many presents is she getting. That's the incoming error. So this is one incoming error. And a bit sad, but it seems like everybody forgot Alice. She was so generous and she doesn't have many people giving her something. And what would we call this? Well, obviously, the in degree. Okay. Now, the, the notation is, uh, this is written degree plus and this degree negative. So... So this is this is the notation that we use for out degree and it degree. Plus meaning, yeah, I don't know how why the plus is there and not the other way. So try to keep this remember that the plus means out degree and the minus means in degree. If you think of a presence, it's a plus is being a positive uh, altruism. But on the other hand, you can say plus. Uh, the in degree should be positive because that's getting presents. That's much, much, much nicer. But okay, it's the way it is. So let's let's fill fill in the numbers for the other guys. So for Bob, well, we see he has um, one out degree and one in degree. So let's get let's calculate the out degrees first. So how many for Shirin? Shirin has given one present, so she has. Oh, why do I see here? So she's one here. Uh, let's do Carla. Carla, okay. Carla actually gave only one present. That's here, so also one. David gave also only one present. So David gives one. Uh, Eve gave one present, so also one out degree for Eve. Okay. That's the out degrees. Let's do the in degrees now. Yeah, I'm doing just that because uh, it's, it's cumbersome to to shift colors all the time. Okay, A we did B. So for B there is one in degree because one incoming error. For Eve, uh, there is sorry, no, sorry, Carla, Carla. Carla has one incoming error, two incoming errors, three incoming errors, she's popular, right? And then four incoming errors. Okay, so Carla has four. So let me draw some lines here that we don't get confused. Okay, David. David gets one error in and one error out. So, okay, that's one in degree. Eve, no in degrees. Nobody is giving something to uh, poor Eve. And Shireen is getting a present from Alice, an ingredient there and an ingredient there too. Okay, let's now count what the sum of these degrees. We remember, let's, let's think about what was the previous case? The previous case, degrees were either in or out, it didn't matter because there was no error, uh, sort of arrow, there was no direction. So in some sense, what we expect is that the out degrees plus the in degrees is actually just the degrees. That's what it's supposed to be, right? We have, we have narrowed down the, the notion of degree into an out degree and an in degree when it's directed. But if it's undirected, then it's we count them all together. So if we add these numbers, so let's add them. Okay, so what is here? 1, 2, 6, 7, 9. And what do we get here um, in red? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, oh, okay. Mm, I guess that's coincidence. Let's think about that later. Is this coincidence or not? Now, how many edges are there? Remember, in our handshake theorem, the, the sum of the degrees was related to the number of edges, not the number of vertices. Don't get confused here, okay? It's the number of edges. <coughs> I don't know whether I made this clear, but in the examples, where I said, when I keep adding edges, these, the number of edges changes, but the degrees also change, but not the number of vertices. That it can change without changing anything else by putting an extra, like, like okay, somebody else walks in, okay? And he, he doesn't know anybody, so he's just standing there. So that person that is standing here has increased the number of uh, vertices, but 
not the edges have changed, not the degrees have changed. Okay, so the, the, the vertices do not play that much, although the degrees are about vertices. Somehow it's, it's incorporated in the degrees. It's the number of edges that it counts, okay? So let's count how many edges do we have. I'll do it here again. So one edge, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm looking for more, but I should not look because it is nine. So the number of edges is nine. And this is no coincidence. So the handshake theorem, in case of, of gift giving theorem, rather, is the number of sum of all out degrees. So the sum of the degree out, the out, oh, oh so that was degree plus, sorry, that was degree plus. So I used the wrong notation. I, I would have used, I, I think, I don't know why they use a plus, but okay. If you take the number of, the sum of all out degrees, that's the same as the number of all in degrees. The sum of all in degrees. That's already kind of strange. And it's also equal to the number of edges. Well, it might sound strange, but if you think a little bit about it, it is not, right? Because, okay, what's the sum of the out degrees? Let's think about in this particular case. What does this number represent? Well, it's persons, uh, every person is giving presents. One present at this person, one present at that person. That's the, the out degree of, uh, of every single person here. So the, this total number is just the number of presents given. How many presents have been given? What is this? In, 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 uh, at the end degree means how many presents is a particular person getting. So the sum of it is how many presents are in totally uh, received. So the number of given presents is, of course, the number of received presents. We are the, no presents. Uh, Santa Claus is not dropping extra presents here, or or or, or the the groom is not stealing any presents. So the number of presents stay the same. So these are the numbers of presents given. These are the number of presents received. And what is this? The edges is the number of times a, of a present giving. The the number of times a present has been um, handed over. So this is the number of um, presents given, the number of presents received, and the number of presents exchanged. No, not exchanged. The number of present uh, bearing, uh, present, well, the act of present giving. Okay. And of course, they all three are the same. I hope that is now more convincing if I do it on this example. Okay. Now, uh, for... I'm, this this section is quite long, and I'm gonna so split it in. Uh, I'm not gonna cover everything today. So, but I want to give a couple of special graphs. Um, and so, these are first a very important class of graphs are the complete graphs on n vertices. I know that some of you still think that this is an M, but this is an N. My M's look like this. Okay? So, okay, I'm just... So, a complete graph on N vertices, what does that mean? Okay, let's do... A com what is And, and the, the notation for that is a K. I don't exactly know where the K comes from, so with index N. Uh, it might be from German again, complete which is, but even that is not written with a K, so honestly, I don't know where the, 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 the notation comes from, but it is very standard, KN. So let's consider, let's look at what is K3 first. Well, how do you draw that? Well, it's simple, yeah? Three vertices, N is three, so they have three vertices, so they basically form a triangle. And now, complete graph, what is that? A complete on all vertices, every two uh, vertices are connected. And that's why it's complete. Like there is, You cannot add any edge anymore. All the edges that could be, add, uh, uh, could be there are there. So there could be an edge from here to there, there's an edge from there to there, and an edge from there to there. That's a triangle. It's not very impressive, but look what happens already if I do with four. So now it's there one, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. Is that everything? No, there's an edge here. And there's an edge here, which I can still draw this way, okay? 
this are uh, sorry i'm i'm back into non directed graphs i should have perhaps well you see from the picture they are not directed graphs we we will see we, we switch once in a while from to directed graphs but most of our attention will be to undirected graphs okay so let's do k5 now it's it's very uh, common to arrange the five points in uh, like a nice pentagon although i'm very bad at drawing pentagons this is not a nice pentagon but okay you can imagine so it's like a star of david a little bit and it actually is because look i have to connect all everybody that can be connected right so let's connect everybody that can be connected that's an awful star of david Luckily, like that. This is the Star of David. But is that everything? No, 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 no. This is also this, and there's also that, and there's also this here, this, and that. Oh, th that one I had already. That was so. It was. Oh, uh, I'm gonna try it one more time, guys. Can I do one more time? I'm so frustrated. It's so ugly. So let me do it one more time. So here is one. Here is one. Here is one. Here is one. And here is one. So let's perhaps first do the outer five. That I get a regular pentagon, which is not really regular. And now I connect all the insides. Notice that, okay, I could go around for this one. But I'm going to get in trouble if I have to draw the next one here and also this one. In other words, this one cannot be drawn without crossing. This is what we call a non-planar curve. A planar graph, sorry. So this cannot be drawn without having some of the edges crossing. You can try to, to, try to draw it, but there's always going to be some crossings. So K4, K3, K4, K5. How many edges does K5 have? So the number of edges of K5. Okay, Professor, I can count. I will count it for you. No, I don't want you to count. I want you to calculate it. Okay. So if you want to count it, okay, go go ahead. But I want to ask you this. How many edges does K103 have? Oh, dear. If you're going to draw 103 and then count the number of edges, you're going to be busy for a long, long time, right? So how are we going to do this? How can we calculate the number of edges of, 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 of a complete graph without counting? Okay. Let's do the counting first. You, you asked for it. Okay, we'll do the counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, uh, 8, 9, 10. Do you miss some? Yeah, even, even this system is not, not very uh, error-proof. So, uh, 10. It seems to be 10. Okay, but I'm going to be smart. I'm going to use my handshake theorem. Because after all, that's about the number of edges, right? The number of or twice the number of edges. Okay, so this number here, so twice this number of edges is the sum of the degrees of uh, all the vertices, right? That's the handshake theorem. So he, also the vertices are now in K103. But let's discuss what is a complete graph. Every two vertices are connected. What can you tell about the degree of a vertex? So every vertex has what degree? Let's look at an example. Let's look at K4. Every vertex has degree, well, this vertex here, what is the degree? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Why? Well, Every vertex has to be connected to every other vertex. How many other vertexes are there? N minus 1. So the degree is N minus 1. 1 less than the number of vertices. You're not, we're, not, sorry, we're not taking loops, remember? So, if I would apply this here, so twice the number of edges of K5. Ah, okay, sorry, sorry. Let me, sorry, yes, yeah, so let me go, go continue here. So, this is the summation for x going in k103, and the degrees is n minus 1. Correct? n minus 1, right? Okay. Because that's what I just said, right? Every degree is... Oh, in, in, uh, sorry. In, in, uh, in this case, it's 102, I mean. Sorry, 102. Or 103, right? So, and how many times do I add... So, it's, it's the same number. 102 plus 102, 102. How many times do I do it? Well, as many times as there are edges, sorry, as there are vertices in KO3. 
So what, what, how many vertices are there in K103? Well, 103, that's the whole point. So the number is one, 103 times 102. There are 103 uh, vertices, each has degree 102. So that's the total uh, sum of the degrees. So the number of edges, that there's an extra 2 here, I have to bring it to the other side. So the number of edges is 103 times 102 divided by 2. Which is already kind of a substantial number, right? So it would have taken quite some counting. Does it work? So what's the general formula? I hope you see the general formula. The number of edges, let's, let's just write it now here. What's the general formula? The only thing that we have to replace is 103 by n, right? Okay, so let's do this. So, this number is always, we said, n minus 1. So it's the summation for all the vertices in Kn. Yeah, notice what is very often done, I, I should mention that. Kn is the graph. Is Kn is the graph, the complete graph. And by definition, a graph is a, co a collection of vertices together with a collection of edges. But very often, one confuses the graph with its vertex set, which is not correct, because different, the same vertex set could have many different graphs on it. I hope that is clear, right? So this, for instance, a graph, if you take a graph with three vertices, the complete graph, K3, that I just drew, is one of them, but this would be another graph, which is totally different. In fact, just these three, without any edges between them, is also a graph. So the same set of vertices can have many graphs that are on top of it. But nonetheless, very often one... one, one confuses the graph with its vertices set. It, it's because, because we know what we mean. Because Kn represents the complete graph. So it's no, there's no need to say what are the, the edges, because it's everything. So why need to say that if it's everything? So we just say that. So, okay. So I'm, that's, I just wanted to justify why I'm saying x lies in Kn here. So going back, the degree of uh, a vertex... In, in a complete graph is always n minus 1. And how many vertices are there? So how many times do we take this sum? How many terms are there? Well, as many as there are vertices, which is by definition n. So we see that the number of edges of kn is n over n minus 1 divided by 2. Remember, there's an extra 2 on this side here. Okay. And does it fit here, this, this calculation? So the number of edges of k should then be 5 times 4 divided by 2. That is 20 divided is 10. That was correct. Okay. Uh, very quickly, I, I leave those perhaps to homeworks or so. Think about this. A cycle on n vertices is basically, uh, you, you put them all like in... Like almost like on a circle, cycle, circle, right? Like, say, here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here n is 7. And then you connect each single one of them in an order like that. So it, it kind of it gives you a cycle where you can go from one vertex exactly to another vertex. Yeah. Uh, that's a cycle. I'm going to define a wheel, but I'll do it in... Uh, what's a wheel? On, um, so this cycle, sorry, by the, yeah, sorry, I should have uh, given the notation. Cycles are denoted CN. Now, the wheel, uh, let me see, two, uh, three, yeah, wheel is a little bit weird notation. The, the not, sorry, uh, this was supposed to be in here. So the wheel WN is actually has one more note. One more vertex. So, the n here is not the the index n is not sorry. The index n is not the number of nodes, but it is one less than the number of nodes. Because why? Because it's a it's a cycle where you put in one extra node in the middle and connect all the previous ones with it. So you get this. This gives gives you the spokes of a wheel. That's why it's called a wheel. Okay. And then uh, another one is the n-dimensional hypercube, Qn. So the n-dimensional hypercube, that's a whole big fancy word, Qn. 
And so how does it look like? Well, um, <coughs> I'm going to give you a recipe to draw it. Oh, let, let me give a couple examples. Uh, first of all, on four, so if n is sorry, n is two, so this is n is two, so this is q. Two, so let's do q one. Q one is just a line. That's not even a cube, right? Okay. Q two is also not a cube, but is a square. So actually, we have seen this, right? This is actually which 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 were the ones that we've seen? Is it a, a k n or is it a w n or is it a c n? It's a c n, right? It's a c four. Okay, so Q2 is the same as C4. Now, notice that the number here, we will, we will set the index here, how this relates to the number of vertices. What is Q3? And here is the actual cube. So here we have a cube here. So again, since it's a cube, I cannot really draw it. So the idea is there is a node here in the back also, and that node is connected also to the to its neighbors, like the way the edges of a cube. So the n, so these are three-dimensional cube. This is a true cube, but then a four-dimensional cube. Okay, it's hard to imagine, but we we have this notion of four-dimensional cube, five-dimensional cube, and so what are the edges? Well, exactly the edges of the cube. But there's a very nice way of writing them down. Namely, let's first calculate the number of the number of vertices. So the number of vertices here, not the number of edges. We will we can calculate that too, but let's calculate the number of vertices. Two, right? Two vertices. How many vertices here? Four. How many vertices here? Four front, four back, eight. Notice these are that's two to the power one, two to the power two, two to the power three. And so in general, Q n will have two to the n vertices. Now. Suppose we make the vertex set is the collection of all n bits, n, uh, bin n binary strings of length n. Let me say it that way. Bin the binary strings of length n. Okay, so v is the binary strings of length n. E an edge between A and B, where A and B are now binary strings, if they differ only in one bit. Okay, so let me let me see what what I said here. So um, let me do it on a on on a drawing here. So. First of all, let's n take n is 3 again, so that we get actually this. We, we should now get this picture, right? That's what I'm claiming. I'm claiming, sorry, I should have said that, that Qn can be visualized, can be realized as the following way. You take as vertices all the binary strings of length n. And then you put an edge between two binary strings. If the, the difference between the two binary strings is only in one bit, only at one of the bits is different. So one bit is one in 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 one of the edges uh, in one of the vertices and is a zero in the other. That's what it means. Okay. So, what are the binary the binary? Let's write them up. I'm gonna. So. I'm gonna already put dots here. So zero zero zero. That is a binary string of length three. Remember n is three, so binary string is length three. So you have also zero zero one. I'm going to draw them in a particular order for a reason that you will very shortly see. One zero zero. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, zero one zero, right? So here is zero one zero. So this all. So the moment I have drawn all the strings that have either three zeros or two zeros, correct? Now let's let's already put in our edges. There is an edge between. There are more. I, I there are four more. But I'm not drawing them yet. I'll draw them in a sec. But just already on those. What are the edges here? Well, these two differ in one bit. Namely the first bit. So there is an edge between them. These two also differ one bit. And these two also one bit. So we actually have edges here everywhere. Okay, let's now uh, write down all the, the bits. The, all the, sorry. 
all the binary numbers of three binary strings of length three that have two ones in it. Well, there is first of all um, one zero one. There is uh, one one zero, and there is that's uh, a zero one one, and there is zero one one. Correct. Let's now start adding edges as I uh, added these nodes to it. Okay, so these two differ by um, one bit, namely the middle bit, so we're gonna connect them. Same here, right? These two are connected. What about these two? Are these two connected? No, because they differ too much. What about these two? No, they differ too much. Is there anything else that you see? Yes, these two nodes differ by the first bit, so I should connect them. Okay. You see other things? I hope you see that also these two need to be connected because they differ in the first bit and also these two have to connect but they differ in the last bit. Now, is this all the bits of length 3? No, there's one missing, right? Okay, so I'm gonna put it here, 111. And what it connects? 111 connects to 110, it connects to 101, and it connects to 011. And now I notice I forgot one, right? I forgot this one, in the previous case already. I'm sorry, I forgot that one. Because I have to get the cube, right? And now I'm getting the cube. That's a cute way, of course. And now you can visualize what a, a, a four cube is. Okay, I'm going to stop here and we will continue with the same um, three point, uh, what is this, 10.2 um, in the next lecture.